Everybody's ready. Are, are we gonna do the coop intro? Are we gonna do the coop intro? <laughs> no. What, we <laughs> no. did the coop intro on the real show. Yeah, we're fine. What are we doing? No, we're not <laughs> What's doing. What's up, dude, bros? Coop doesn't have a podcast. Coop doesn't have a podcast. Um, hello. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Provisional Nerf News Network Podcast, episode 14. Uh, today is July 13th, 2023. That's a Thursday, day before the episode comes out. But once the episode is done, before we start <laughs> recording the podcast, it's been a while since that's happened. Um, this is, of course, the companion to episode 14. Did I just say 13? I didn't say 13, did I? No, it's the 13th. It episode. is July 13th. That's where you're getting messed up here. It is it's... July. Okay. I, I, I got, like, confused about what I... I said the right thing. Yeah, you but did. But I thought 13, 14... Okay. <laughs> anyway. This is, of course, the companion podcast <laughs> episode to episode 14 of the Provisional Nerf News Network YouTube show. Today on KT Learns Counting. Um... Oh, shush. <laughs> we, uh, you might get more out of this if you've watched the show first. Uh, it's about a 13-minute episode this time around. But, um, you know, we only get, like, uh, generally around 10 times as many views on the show as the podcast. So the likelihood that you're listening to this podcast and you haven't watched the show is pretty slim. But I think that that's worth saying. I am here, as always, with my co-hosts, Valmods, JoelKing627. Say what's up. What, what up? Um, and uh, unless anyone's got anything extra special going on, we can kind of dig right into it. I'll take that as a no. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we generally start the show off with a little list of uh, stories that were submitted to us that did not make the show for one reason or another. Sometimes things are uh generally not it's not that they're like not big of a story enough it's just that they uh may be a continuation of a previous story that's not um or there just isn't a lot to say about them uh but we want to at least make sure those things get mentioned um so that people who listen to the podcast can pick those things up might be something that's interesting to you and the first of those things is kind of an unusual one um and i meant to have the discord open so that i uh yes um Null over on the Discord uh, submitted uh, a story about the Roblox Synchro Shot, which uh, and and part and really the reason we didn't cover this is it's essentially a speculation story, um, which we don't we don't we're generally trying to report on concrete stuff, um, but this is a really interesting speculative thing based on the fact that it seems to have been re released in the Philippines and the and Australia and then not appeared anywhere else. So the Roblox Synchro Shot was a micro shot that we reported on a few episodes back. And it's it's based on what's the game? Uh Funky, Funky Friday, Friday is what it says, which yeah. is apparently a game on Roblox and yeah, apparently the game, game is a direct ripoff of an actual video game called Friday Night right. Funkin, which yep. it, the the theory goes that the reason the Blaster was canceled is that basically they didn't want to deal with copyright issues. Or or something. Or they just realized that it was it's like, like oh, maybe, oh, we're literally basing this Friday. off of a ripoff. It Yeah. Um and it's a little bit of a bummer because of all the micro shots, this one looked kind of cool. It yeah, just it's looked got like the, a weird it's jolt got the with transparent. clear plastic and like a and it's got like a vile colors jolt on the inside. It's got purple and green. Mm, that's true i know it did yeah look it could have been something really cool too if you took the clear shell off yeah see what right the inside part is like i actually really liked uh so friday night funkin if you don't know is a like web based game it was like an old sort of flash type game and uh. it, the music on it was really good actually kt you might like it because it is i think it's older like uh bit style okay type stuff it's it's sort of like a old ddr game soundtrack. Yeah, it's got a really good soundtrack. I'll just say that. But yeah, right. I, I was familiar with it. So I was like, oh, that's a really weird tie in because that's the first thing I thought of was like, oh, they're doing right. Friday Night Funkin'? Why are they doing Friday Night Funkin'? But yeah, it, it was. Oh my God. Kind of a yeah, weird... if you look at the Funky Friday, like the logo itself. <clears throat> yeah, is even the logo is yeah. complete rip. That's yeah, the f I instantly thought it was Friday Night Funkin'. I didn't even look at it and, and see the actual name. <laughs> So, like that's how close it was 
The other reason we didn't cover this, though, is like I said, it is it is ultimately speculation. I, I think that this makes a lot of sense. Um, however, sometimes there's just cha- like supply chain delays and weird things like this just don't appear in certain places for a long time. So it's possible we'll still see this blaster. Like, look at the double punch. Like, it, it was in Canada for like, what, a month or two now? Yeah. Been a while, yeah. It's even been out in like Europe, and now they're just finally making it to the states, which is one of our stories. Actually, right. I I actually went to Walmart looking for a chair, and I found one on the shelf, just out of nowhere. Yeah. But just kind of yeah. So these things happen, right? Things show up kind of unexpectedly, so that may still happen. So anyway, that's why we didn't cover it, just because it's essentially speculation. But we thought it was interesting enough to mention it. Um, another one that didn't make the show. Uh, new listings for Poppy's Playtime skins, X-Shot Blasters. Uh, we've talked about the Poppy's Playtime tie-in horror, weird horror game that X-Shot got the license for, for whatever reason. Um, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of these skins releases that we're kind of kind of just stop covering because the whole point of the skins line is they can get a license and like turn around some totally cool in most cases product very easily by just coming up with the print and they don't have to redesign a blaster yeah it's, so it's, i think we're gonna see a, they're gonna I pump out gonna a, ton see of a lot of these yeah it, yeah it like why wouldn't we it, it, like i gotta hand it to zero that's a pretty smart strategy right there that's a pretty cost effective yeah. if you ask me whereas like you know nerf has their ink line they don't call it that it's in the the code names but yeah they're clearly it's good enough for hasbro to copy so w- uh, right it seems like they're copying x shots concept but interestingly hasbro seems to be bringing back some blasters that were not in production i really love like the 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 teenage mutant ninja turtles one now i I've, I've yeah. never seen any of that ninja turtles stuff never saw that as a kid so I have no emotional connection, but like, come on, sweet revenge. Yeah. We know how old we are. We already had this conversation in the last <laughs> podcast. We did? I totally forgot. Um, I'm so dated. Uh, and uh, so anyway, long and the short of that is we probably won't be consistently covering every skins release. There's just going to be so many of them. And if it's not a new blaster, it's not like we're, we're not like setting a rule that like it has to be a new mold to be good new news. Absolutely not. It's just that the X-Shot skins line in particular, there's going to be so many. Um, another new release, uh, Diana, which we discussed a while back um, uh, when it first was announced. It's available now on a store, but the link to it is, a, is a, I forget what the store is called, but it's a, it's a store in China and it's not available to ship to the US. And while we don't, we are not intending for us to be a u.s only show most of our audience is in lives in places that can't order this blaster from this store um so it it didn't really seem like something that made sense for us to cover um like this blaster is available but not for not for you probably yeah because like most of our audience is probably (laughs) not in china (laughs) yeah Yeah. um so we skipped that one uh and the last one is um uh nerf taiwan right covered these marvel mech tie-in blasters um and we were having some trouble confirming it's the mech strike mechasaurs captain america red wing and the black panther saber claw and we were having some trouble confirming how new these were because like i've definitely seen the saber claw on shelves already and i've been seeing the mech strike line and there's like an offshoot of the mech strike line that's like that's like monster dinosaurs but then these ones are also mechasaurs and it's just kind of confusing i don't know it um at the end of the day even if they are like brand new this is gonna be one of those weird sub series that very few people are gonna care about because they're just they're not targeted toward us let's be honest here like, they're targeted toward the same people who Elite Junior would be. They shoot probably like crap. Yeah, there's basically zero interest in this line from the hobby. Like, sometimes the Captain America shield ones are kind of cool, because people can run them as shield that also kind of shoot a dart. But, like, generally speaking, these don't get any attention from our community, and they there's so many of them, and you see them in thrift stores all the time. So... That's not something like that's probably going to get a lot of attention on the show in general. 
Um, and so we we skipped it. Oh yeah, and I actually posted a picture of it on the shelf here. Anyway, so that's it. Those are the four stories that were reported to us that we did not cover, and now you know about them. And now we can loop back um, hmm. to what Jolt was saying earlier about the double punch. And now the double punch is such a funny thing because we've been watching this blaster since it was a tiny speck in an Amazon banner header. I thought um, it was Toys R Us. In oh, Toys R Us. You're right. Toys yeah, R Us yeah. Canada. Yep. In uh, in Murph's hands. And it was blue uh, and, and white. And the colors were different. Yeah. The colors were different, and it was barely we could barely tell what it was. And everybody was trying to speculate on what that blaster was going to be. And now Anybody we have it in hand. Remember that? Just out of nowhere. Now we have it in hand. There was we, no warning. Uh, it literally we, just dropped. We is a strong word, Jolt. We is a strong <laughs> word. Yeah, we, we we being the cool kids, a.k.a. not you. <laughs> yeah, Amazing. a.k.a. not Jolt, or not Jolt, not KT. Yeah, us, yeah. Me, me and Jolt now have them, because I got mine today. And I got yeah. mine, like, the first day, basically, that they yeah. were out. By, by mistake, yeah, I wasn't for- even at Walmart for Nerf. <laughs> I just went to so, the aisle, and it was just sitting there. So, uh, and I, I, should, I should make a side note before the two of you start talking about the double punch. <laughs> it's unlikely that I'm actually going to see it anytime soon um, for reasons not really related to Nerf. Uh, I do live in Vermont, and if you've been watching the news at all, you might be aware that we've had some significant flooding incidents and um, while the Walmart here is not, was not flooded, it's up on a big hill, uh, we already get everything last. First of all, my Walmart shelf has not, my Walmart Nerf aisle has not changed in at least a month. Um, and the supply lines around here, the ability to move trucks around are going to be pretty limited uh, for a while. So I probably won't get my hands on this for quite a bit. But I can live vicariously through Violent Jolt. What do the two of you think of it so far? Jolt, didn't you open yours up already? Uh, yeah, I've, I've played around with mine because I got it probably like, what now, a week ago? Um, it's the it's, little, it's a good blaster. I, there's some issues with it. Uh, mine has a pretty unbalanced upper flywheel. Or, uh, upper, upper flywheel. It's pretty... Eh. The performance is about what you expect for an Elite 2.0 blaster. It's like, what, 60, 70? It's, it's fine. The There were a couple issues that I had with it. Number one, my rev trigger was really, like, it squeaked, and it's very heavy. So I actually replaced the spring in mine. And the other thing is the magazines are so bad. Yeah, they're I like can confirm a, that. Yeah, we talked they're about that. So, yeah. They're super squishy plastic, like, think Strife Jamdor. They're one piece, like the Alpha Strike ones, and they just feel like trash in your hands. Worst yeah. magazine I have ever felt. The, the knockoff yeah, stuff so that's so- like a millimeter thick on Amazon is better quality than these. Well, because Jolt, we talked about this because um, the uh, uh, what is the what was the Elite 2.0? What was the Storm Charge the Wild Edition Strife Storm called? Charge Storm Charge. The Storm Charge has um, the one piece folding magazine like the Alpha Strike stuff. And I sent some pictures, remember, of like the bracing is slightly different. I'm, I'm interested to get my hands on the, uh, the Double Punch mag because uh, I'm curious to compare it to those other two magazines. I've kept an Alpha Strike magazine around just because of this. I really hope that they don't move to this magazine construction because I've noticed functional differences. Oh yeah, in it, even, I had a problem. Even with the mine, like even. the storm charge, yeah, the storm charge one feels like feels in hand like slightly better than the Alpha Strike one, but not by much. Um, and I've had functional problems trying to use them. There have been there have been actual issues. I had some AccuStrike darts fail to feed properly out of one of these magazines one time because they were rubbing against it and it was getting squished slightly. Um, yeah. I gotta say, like, of all of the magazines I've tested, I've not had the Alpha Strike one or the Storm Charge. The other one that comes up in my mind is the the Roblox Viper Strike mag is that soft plastic, but even that doesn't feel this bad. This is pretty terrible. Like, genuinely, I would you, rate this you, you know, the worst quality magazine ever. You know, Period. it's funny. I don't you're you're right that the the Viper Strike mag was was different was more in that realm. 
I guess I was so focused on all the other things I hated about the Viper Strike that I didn't I didn't pay attention to it before I mailed it to you. <laughs> um, Vile, what do you think? Have I, you so even I, opened yours? You just I got have, it, right? I just got it out of the box. I, I checked it out. Jolts, I can 100% confirm. These mags are trash. I actually tore my mags open, took the spring and the follower, and chunked the mags in the trash. <laughs> Gopher did that, too. <laughs> They're that, so bad. Yeah, that's what Gopher did. It was so bad. I was like, you know what? These are spare parts. The, I am not even going to keep these, and I, I chunked them in the trash because it is nasty. It is a really bad feeling like mag. Yeah. The, mine didn't have the issues Jolt had. Like we talk, I, I haven't put batteries, so I don't know if the flywheels are nasty or not, but for me, the, the rev trigger wasn't really a problem. Um, everything else looks pretty good. Feels nice. Like, I, oh, yeah. I actually these, really These are hoping. comfortable. Like, the foregrip yeah, is amazing. Yeah, the, the positioning of stuff, it's, it is fun to kind of have the gimmick. Like, it is, it is a fun kind of weird gimmicky blaster, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm really hoping for these to hit thrift stores because I would like to get a couple more, you know, much cheaper than what they're going for. Speaking um, of price, actually, quick note here, the retail price, according to Hasbro for this blaster, is 50 United States dollars, but for, like I said in the segment, Walmart, for some reason, has them instantly on sale now for, I think it's like 34 88 so 35 bucks. Yep. Which yep. is not bad, so if you want one of these, now might be the time. It's a pretty good yeah, deal. as long as your Walmart has it. <laughs> as long, that's the problem, as long as your yeah, Walmart has only. it. Because that was another issue, was they're online. They popped up on uh, Walmart's website uh, for that thirty four ninety nine and saying, "Oh, this is the online price, or thirty four eighty eight or whatever for the online price," and it said, "You know, unavailable." So it was like, "Well, I can't even order it," uh, or it was. Right. I think it was like they had stock and then it instantly like sold out or something. I don't know what happened. What it is is it, it is. actually is incorrect oh, on the they're website there now. Um, oh, really? You can so get they, them now. It's yeah. uh, incorrect in its listing when it says it's unavailable at a certain store because it said unavailable for my store after I had literally just gone and bought one and there were like 30 of them there. Mm, and the same yeah, happened yeah. to Fowlin where he went to the store <clears> and <throat> after seeing on the website that it said it wasn't there and it was there. So it yeah. the website may be incorrect in that. Yeah, I mine was the same. My, it said that the store didn't have them. But when I went in, they had three of them on this end cap that they just kind of throw product that they don't have a place for on the shelves. It's like right on the end of the of the bicycles is where they put this thing. So come on, come on, y'all. We've been doing this long enough. You know, you can't trust the the store website uh, databases. Yeah, you just can't. That doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. It's it's arbitrary. But no, it's a it's a fun looking blaster. It's a fun little gimmick. I think that I know there's a lot of people working on stuff. We were kind of me and Jolt were talking about it earlier that you know cages and flywheels and trying to get mm -hmm. better ones and stuff so because like there are there know. are issues internally that will make it a little bit harder to mod like uh thanks to buff daddy for sacrificing his poor double punch uh we know that the <laughs> yeah. shafts on the motors are actually uh knurled so if you try to take off the flywheels oh. it'll actually ruin the flywheels yeah that was a big one Interesting. which is so unfortunate yeah, they, if you do that and then same thing goes for motors. If you need motors, like they have uh, extended, you know, longer shafts on them. So we would have to get, right. there, there's a whole lot of stuff and, and hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll see something. The, the downside is, is that if it's the only blaster like that, it's, it's very unlikely that, you know, any of our Nerf hobby shops will carry or want to invest in that. So, you know, this might be sort of a, a community thing that the community has to kind of build it first before anybody takes interest. I know Fatworst yeah. was working on something, I think, but uh, it is definitely going to be a, one of those niche blasters that's not going to get yeah. that much attention for mod parts, I think. Yeah. Right. As a stock blaster, though, it's great. I love it. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on one at some point. Um, I'm less excited to get my hands on, but still very curious about nerf's new gel blasters which really kind of popped up out of nowhere uh i mean we'd seen a couple of them as leaks previously like the names and at least. it's interesting because i mean you know we sort of as a show we kind of swore off talking about gel but when this came up it These really were actually interesting felt, it felt worth talking about for sure because um okay. so one thing that i noticed about this new line 
is if you look at like particularly the rival lines in the past, they tend to release them in a trio where there's a pistol and something quote unquote that's a shotgun, whether it's just like a pump action thing or and then the flagship is either a quote unquote sniper or a full auto blaster, right? And the gel or, line or already sometimes has a what they'll do blaster. is it'll basically be like small, medium, and large. So like with the uh, curve yeah, shot, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. the small being the flex, the medium being the side swipe, and the large being the helix. Or with uh, yes. the the AccuStrike line or whatever they're calling it. Well, the AccuStrike the, line especially. They they had the, the fate. The, yeah, the fate, and then the, the vision, fate, the vision, and then and the, and pathfinder. the pathfinder. Yeah. And that, and so I guess what I'm saying is this line is much more analogous to that layout. Um, and I think the thing that's cool about it. They're different. And, and people will complain justifiably that like, you know, if you buy your average full auto gel blaster, sure, the performance on these is not as, the performance isn't as high, right? But. Well, I, actually it is. I would be really. Like. Well, I, I know that the, the performance, the actual FPS on, let me finish my thought. The actual FPS, yes, I realize is actually quite high on the, um, the flagship one. However, um, my thought is that I would be very curious to actually put the, because I feel like the functionality of the shotgun, the functionality of the um, longer barreled, uh, the ghost with the hop up, with the extended barrel and uh, the functionality of the pistols and the fact that you can dual wield them because they have immediate firing is actually different enough that I'd be very curious to see what happens if you actually just outfit a group with just those and have them actually pick those roles and try to strategize around them. Because I think that the blasters are actually functionally different enough in a way that would make that interesting. Whereas with the rival Accu blasters, I don't feel like they're functionally that different. Like, they really are. Each one progressively hits slightly harder and they're primed differently, but they're functionally very similar, right? They all shoot one rival round at a time. You're paying for capacity, is what you're doing. Is they will shoot probably about the same FPS, but it's how many rounds you have before reloading. And with the Pathfinder, you right. get magazines. So. Right. Well, with, with, that's actually the one thing that I will say. I was on the edge about Nerf Gelfire. I actually have both of their existing main blasters. I have the Mythic and I have the Legion. Yeah. I gotta say, what they're doing with this line, I actually like. Because one of my main complaints with Gel is that there was no diversity. Everything was a select yes. fire, full auto, that's, 90 billion rounds a second thing. That's exactly what I'm that's exactly what I'm getting at. This this actually has a playstyle diversity built into yeah, the design. There's cool stuff like the shotgun shooting five gel balls at once. That's cool. Like, that's I haven't seen different. that anywhere else. I don't yeah, think I anyone say, else has done anything like that. Like, I've sure, if you go up against other brands of gel ball stuff, it might not be as effective. But if you're just using Nerf brand stuff, they are actually trying to innovate and make it an interesting game, which I love. They're yeah. trying to innovate, which is something none of the other companies are really doing. Yep, I agree. I totally agree. Um, Their performance is still lower, granted, so... Again, other off-brand stuff's just going to hit as hard, but... Well, so that, that's where my thought is that if you take a group of people and you only give them a variety of the Nerf blasters so the performance level is, is comparable... As they intended. Yeah. Then wh what would that do to the play style? It I think it would make it like interesting. you would have Gel Ball with a more diverse play style the way Nerf tends to be. Yeah. It makes me more interested in the sport. Like build a setup where each where each team each team only has one person with a mythic, and everyone else either has has like one of the new ones, you know, or a legion. The legion the legion feels kind of like the. Uh, I mean, like what? I guess I mean I I haven't watched so. Okay, so so part of the thing, right? Um, the only the, immediately the only person who has videos on this is Foam Quest. Um, which if you've watched the show. We did use some snippets from Foam Quest's video on the Ghost, um, but Foam Quest does in fact have reviews of all three in the new series out, um, and so it was nice to sort of see a hobbyist have their hands on these so quickly um, and start to get some insight into them. And now I've watched the Ghost video and I've watched the Raid video, the shotgun. 
I'm very curious to see what the performance is on the pistols, because obviously the benefit of the pistol, and we saw a hobbyist. Oh, what was that that we, we reported on this a few episodes back? There was a hobbyist who the, made the trigger pistol, the three right? the 3D printable uh, gel blaster pistol that is dual action trigger, where it primes and fires the blaster at once because the gel can do that. Because the projectile is so light. Yeah, you can do it with a, a, a less strong spring load and a much smaller plunger tube, so it's a lot easier. It's not like with... It, right. It's like how with Airsoft, AEGs are really, really easy because it's a tiny little BB. But with Nerf, you, right. you got a lot more to worry about. Yes. And it's the same thing with the dual action trigger, which is why we have things like the, like the nail biter and like the um, trigger fire and like... They're kind of hard to use, and like the trigger fire especially is really exhausting to use um, because you're just putting so much. You're either putting too little weight into the trigger, and therefore it just fires so poorly, or you have to put so much weight into the trigger, and it's exhausting to use. Gel doesn't have that problem. I'm curious to see what the performance is on this pistol compared to something like the um, uh, the 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 other pistol, the one you were just talking about. The, that you have the legion uh because i i'm it uh, like how different is the performance going to be really between the legion and these little single hand pistols is it really going to be worth the extra i mean i guess the capacity is higher but i don't know i'm curious about that yeah it's uh it's definitely something interesting i like i kind of like where they're going which like previously I had I had very little interest in gel. Like, yes, I have I have both of their existing blasters. I've given them a try. They're not the worst thing in the world. I just didn't have necessarily all that much interest in the sport. I have issues right. with gel itself with having to wait for the balls to hydrate and things like that and environmental concerns. But this makes it more interesting. Here's my real thing still. This is much more interesting. I still don't want to spread gel all over my yard. And that's completely yeah, honestly like, fair, because that is a huge complaint it, it, that I have with gel. It still doesn't make me want to actually mess with with the ammo. And, and I, I, like, I, it makes me feel like, you know, like I can look at the sport from the outside and go like, okay, like, that's definitely an improvement. But it doesn't make me want to do it still. Yeah, it's... So I, I, it's hard for me to see that changing. Um, and le- until we have... A truly biodegradable, maybe gel. Um, that I, I don't know, but I, I, I right now not. I'm just not interested. That's fair enough. Um, like it's yeah. a legitimate concern with gel. It's one of the biggest. I got to be honest. I, I will say, and I mentioned this in the show, and maybe Vile has input on this, but um, I have a feeling we're gonna start to see ghosts. Uh, used in integrations. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. <laughs> these are great. The aesthetics of these, they're going for it hard, and I love it. <clears throat> the, yeah, I think they're... the stocks and, and stuff like that from these things, you know, some of the grips. I'm curious how the grip... I don't have one. I know that you have the Mythic. I know Jolt's got, obviously, both of them. I don't know how the grips are. They're good are, grips. I was, they're good. I was they're curious. Fine. Yeah, you know, they're fine. Because the, um, the batteries are basically a 2S LiPo they should be good enough to be able to handle like a, a simple 2s flywheeler setup like that might be something kind of worth checking you know and and i'm i'm really curious myself for for the integration and and uh you know cutting them up for parts hope i've i've been hoping that they would show up at thrift stores and i haven't seen one yet well it's they have so technically the the legion that i have came from grim grim yeah. thrifted that <laughs> Like, yeah, what, I was it like a week him, after release? How did that even show yeah, up? It's true, true. Yeah, I haven't seen him. And I, I haven't seen him um, even, like, online and stuff. I just don't see people really selling them or getting rid of them. And if they are, they're They have been on deep discount. Lot. I will say this. They must not sell very well on Amazon, because for a while there, it was, like, 35 bucks for a Mythic or mm-hmm. and, like, 13 bucks for a Legion. Like these were on sale. Even the ammo is on sale really cheap. I bought a refill pack. Yeah. It it's very inexpensive if you really want to try some of this stuff. I don't. <laughs> anyway, I got distracted by looking at the article for our next topic, which is um 
uh, boom slang. So uh, we we haven't talked about a lot of the mod spotlights on the podcast lately, but this one really felt like it needed a little extra time to to look at it because uh, there's so much going on, not just in the build. And I think we actually, I, I mean, I'd be happy to talk about the build, but I think we less want to talk about the build right now and more we want to talk about the lore a little bit because uh. Jolt covered the build quite well in the yeah. episode. Um, there just wasn't time yeah. to cover the Make sure you check that lore. out. There, the, just every level of this build. Um, and the, the like Jolt said, the post is really worth looking at because yes. 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 there's so much detail about, about his process and his concept um, and all the materials that he used. I love all of it. It's amazing. There was also, you know... A, a a concept is a, a, a behind this blaster, and a lot of it, I guess, is based on uh, his research into South African gang culture um, and the Afrikaans language. Um, and I don't know, Vile, Vile. I know you had some aspects of this that you wanted to cover. Yeah. So I and and it was interesting because when you talk to Gopher again, if you have a chance definitely go see his posts he has it on imgur he has his whole thing just laid out really well and he's he even said himself that when he was going into this that it got a lot deeper than he was expecting because he this isn't just a fan fiction it's not like a a, a franchise this is uh based on real life and actual culture and you know it goes into a lot of things, and I, I put some some little excerpts here from um, some of his write ups about it. And it it goes into you know the language. It pulled up articles from the '90s. It talked about you know some of these young uh, gang members who are you know as young as like 14, 14 or fifteen years old, yeah. and things like that. And you know the the lore behind it gets really interesting because. And he he pointed that out in his own write up but that it stuck with him. Reading through a lot of these articles, how many of the members had monikers like "young," "boy," and "kid," right? And how they were childish, immature, and seemingly non serious for the respective community. And he put that into the paint, the kind of you know, like look to the blaster, the way that it's you know based boom slang for those that don't know is actually Afrikaans uh, for tree snake. So that's why it looks like a snake, is because it's actually, that's what boom slang means. And, you know, you look at the, the sort of snake head that he carved into the front barrel muzzle, you look at the sticker bombing that he did and, and stuff like that, even the, the kind of graffiti art and things, it all starts to kind of tie into this entire thing. And I have such respect for the fact that it is an actual sort of history lesson like it is it is like a world history type of thing like you didn't know about this particular place you didn't know about these particular problems and i think that's what really to me made this build so much more impressive than than just building a blaster that's you know like i've i've built it you know and try to build integrations and stuff but going that far and in that in depth to really kind of create it and you know, if you want, KT, I can go down this last little section that is basically the person who wields boom slang. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and uh, go ahead and give that. So a read. at the very end of this, I'm I'm going to read this, and this is based off of what you know, what Gopher envisioned the wielder of boom slang would be like. <clears throat> so, but none of that matters. Boomslang isn't the person wielding it. Boomslang is an idea. An apparition, you see. Boomslang is the sledge man to the sledge man. Boomslang's taken 60 mans at a time. A ghost in the dark. You knock him down, and he gets back up. In my minute or a year, hims always come back. Hims will be the last. When you see red eyes in the dark, you can fight, but you know you've always known. That when Boomslang comes, all others will fall. There is no other way. Always been that way since we were kinders. Praying for hymns. Always will be. Now you stay good. Be holy. And maybe the Boomslang keep you rather than find you. 
that yeah that's is, storytelling that is a story and that is a level that i don't think many people really get into with their storytelling well and the thing you got to realize going back through this whole post the like he wrote <clears throat> he wrote this based on a lot of research into this topic oh yeah like oh, he's no. not just making stuff up <laughs> no um, everything everything down to everything that is written on that blaster has meaning the yeah. initials on the side the slander that's on it even the number has meaning to it and it is all right. traceable back to these actual things that is that is massive to me just it is so in depth and again he said that he wasn't expecting to go this deep but it's kind of like he got sucked into it and just really yeah. dove head first it's it's impressive he's really sort of like you know he's building an artifact that sort of tells the story of this uh culture that's i mean it's a culture that's cropped up out of disenfranchisement and out of colonialism and mm -hmm. um it's it's you know a people trying to rebuild some kind of culture and working with what they have and yeah it's just it's it's a work of art i yeah. I, I hope that a lot of people this will inspire people to dig into some of this history a little bit which i think would be one of the better outcomes of seeing a blaster like this that you sort of like get in and be like start to learn about the meanings of some of the things that gopher put on the blaster and and pick up some of this history and and sort of understand where the story's coming from. Yeah, absolutely. Every little detail on that blaster astounds me. The amount of effort yeah. that Gopher put in with the laser, the ammo counter, the freaking, like, what used to be the Hypnos Mag release now does, what was it, the Voltmeter? Which is yeah. insanely cool. And the glowing eyes on the snake head. Oh. Yeah. With the mix, the mix of functional and cosmetic detail and the way that they sort of intertwine it's just like not even getting into above the war, and which is yeah. just insane. Like, yeah, there's no I'll, like comparing that. This is this is in a league of its own. This is this is pretty yeah. amazing. In the safety switch, in the when it is in safe mode, the eyes of the snake are turned off. When you are you've taken it out of safety, the eyes turn on. By the way, oh my god, yeah, yeah. That's it's so good. So <laughs> yes, yeah, cool. that was <laughs> yeah. That's so good. I've never even seen anyone do much with a hypnos, so this is like even like completely unique. Yeah. So like absolutely well done, Gopher. Fifteen out of ten mod right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I got my work Huge cut out for Gopher. me now. Dang it. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, folks, please check out Gopher's post and don't be afraid to dig deeper on this topic and. uh don't be afraid to take this as inspiration for your mods. Even if you're not modding on the physical level that Gopher is, it's worth thinking about these things when you're working on a on a new uh, mod. When you're working, especially on like integrations where you're designing your own whole thing, essentially, it's worth kind of thinking about this. Like, come, like, find um, something in real history or in fictional history, and be like, I want to create something that belongs in this place. Do that research and let that guide your decisions. And that's a really good way to like learn new techniques because like you need to do this technique to make this work the way you want. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, don't be afraid to dig dig in on stuff like this. Like it's obvious here that you know Gopher clearly spent ridiculous amounts of time on this blaster, but clearly spent the same amount of time reading. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. As, as working yeah. on the blaster yeah. and and every bit of that went back into inspiring choices in the work mm -hmm. which then you know has you doing more work <laughs> um and but this is the result and it's yeah. worth it every second of it yeah okay uh now i'm looking at the clock and i'm saying it's time uh for us to play our favorite game what's that blaster uh, yeah. where this week jolt picks uh a, an official nerf blaster and uh reads to us a slightly modified version of the description um we clarified this last episode uh if you le have to leave something out because it would make it too obvious you should don't just say blank say what what it is that you're leaving out like series name or 
ammo type or accessory or whatever um, without saying the thing that would give it away. Um, we uh, Everybody that's not naming the blaster gets uh, an opportunity to guess together what it is. Um, if we guess it without using any lifelines, everybody guessing gets four points. But um, you, if you're not sure, you can ask for the original release year, the original uh, retail price, or the original stock capacity. And um, each of those is minus one point, but might help you get it, uh, which definitely happened last episode. Uh, mm-hmm. After which, um, with Vile's selection, Jolt and I were eventually <laughs> able to figure it out after using two lifelines, leaving the score at 19 for me, 17 for Vile, 24 for Jolt, and 19 for Grimms. And um, Grimms isn't here again today, but uh, we generally just give Grimms the points if we get it and not if we don't. Um, and it is Jolt's turn to pick. So you got something for us? Yep. I do. I just need to wait for the website to load because it's it's a uh, fun fact. The Nerf wiki cuts off a lot of uh, descriptions. So I'm going to the mm. uh, Wayback Machine uh, saved link that they provide for the actual Hasbro website so I can read it off of that. Wow. All right. So that's fun. Let's go. Let's All go. right. Take your series name game to the next level. This air powered blaster lets you take down your opponents in next to no time. The quick-release belt clip lets you make your move fast, so you're aiming and firing as quickly as you can. When your opponent is in sight, grab your blaster and send your series name, Darts Flying. They'll even whistle as they fly. Blast your way to victory. Blaster comes with quick-release belt clip and capacity. Dart, uh, a series name, Darts. Sorry, uh, can you read the last sentence again? Uh, blaster comes with quick release belt clip and capacity series name okay. darts. Got it. Okay, quick release belt clip. Um, I, I'm trying to determine if the belt clip is attached to the blaster or if the belt clip is attached to, cause like, you know, like the mag strike, the clips have a quick release on them. And it's air powered. And it is air powered. I would I, I would say, uh, to be honest, because it's air powered. Now, <clears throat> was mag, the mag strike did have the old whistlers, didn't it? Because that was the older ammo types was I when the mag strike think, came out. I think so. That was prior to Elite. That was original yeah. in strike. It was so, in that dark. It was in that. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, because didn't it come in? Did it come in yellow and then they recolored it? Yeah, it was originally early, yellow. Then I think but you didn't had anything. <laughs> then then there was the like Iron Man one and yep. uh, first one I ever got actually. <laughs> really, I haven't found one. And then yeah. Uh, yeah, they did have the blue one, but that was Dart Tag. Remember? Right. It was Dart Tag, and Dart Tag had those particular darts. Uh, it was around the same Dart Tag era. And, and they had the Velcro ones as well as the Whistler, which were the larger heads on those darts at the time. Right. Okay. That's my instinct. But I think that air is a really big hint. And I want to kind of double check what else, what else is air powered? Um, that could possibly only... have a clip. <clears throat> wait, yeah, wait, wait, the... wait, 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 wait. Can we get the description one more time? Yes, you can. Take your (laughs) series name, game, to the next level. This air-powered blaster lets you take down your opponents in next to no time. The quick-release belt clip lets you make your move fast, so you're aiming and firing as quickly as you can. When your opponent isn't in sight, grab your blaster and send your series name, darts flying. They'll even whistle as they fly. Blast your way to victory. Blaster comes with quick-release belt clip and capacity, series name, darts. Okay, so we have air power and we have whistling darts. I think that those are the right. And yeah, because the there wasn't. There's not a whole lot from Nerf in that era. Because the only other thing would be 
um, that was air powered around the, that era would be like Titan Hornets. Right. Um, but there's no belt clip of any kind for those types of guys and uh, those blasters. And then um, oh, I'm trying to think of all the air powered ones. The, I'm time. Just, the only thing that's giving me pause is that the language makes it sound like the blaster itself has the, the, the belt clip. That's the only thing that's giving me pause. The yeah. thing I wanted to listen back for again was the use of the word clip to make sure it couldn't be referring, because I know that even though it's called the mag stripe, strike, well, it has a, I guess they called it, they called it the mag stripe, but then I don't think they named, because the thing in the mag strike is a clip. Yeah. But, I, I, but even though they call magazines clips, I don't think they called that a magazine. Yeah, because the only thing is with, um, quick release belt clip um that's the only issue because when you when you say that like that's that's two things right you have a clip on a clip <laughs> and yeah, yeah and you know it is for it was for a belt at the time clip clip clipception yeah clipception yo, over here yo dog we are, we heard you like clips the only other ones that really had that was like the rebel line right the only, that had some kind of a belt mm. thing but those did, were holsters not really clips did rebel ever have whistling darts no those were all elite and elite didn't yeah, really didn't have any whistlers so. technically elite. actually rebel had the whistling arrows yeah but those aren't yeah uh... didn't you say darts though yeah, he said I said darts. You said series darts. Yeah, series and darts. Um, so whistling arrows is the problem with this, and we know that uh, Hasbro has done this before. Is sometimes they'll use darts, even though you know that's true. It, they've done that's stuff like that before, true. but air powered. Um, yeah, the only there's other no air powered. The only one uh, was the the power belt. Arrow in that era. Well, no, that was actually not uh, air powered. That no, was no, that was an um, AEB. AEB. Um, there was nothing that I can think of in that was air powered. Yeah, because they kind of got rid of air powered, mostly with the Titans, because they did yeah. re-release them a couple of times, and then there's not really been. T and obviously, same thing with the Mag Strike when they re-released it again. Um, well, because all the other air powered stuff is like air tech. Or yeah, like, um, but I can't. I can't envision any of those with a belt clip. Yeah, uh, I don't cause... know. Okay, do we want to? I don't even remember how many darts. Like I'm like thinking about lifelines. Like I don't even remember how many darts the mag stripe mag strike thing holds. It's always just like you stick them in there until there's no more space, and then you shoot at one time. So it's not like. <laughs> you know yeah. like i'm not counting um what about what about the could it what's what was the other no they wouldn't be a separate blurb for any part of the unity power system i don't think what there not that i would think of I can't. I don't think there would be. I, I also have a hornet shell that's like quite literally sitting right next to me. Well, so that's, that's what why I was thinking it's like about I know not the not hornet that. necessarily, but the uh, the little one. Like, does that have a belt clip on it? But I don't think it would have its own. No, that especially one. Especially not. It's a single shot anyway, isn't it? Yeah, it was a single shot. Scout, scout or whatever. Yeah, it was a scout. And that that clipped on the side of the the Titan. That's the problem, it, and that's the issue with with it being said as air powered. That makes a belt clip. Like all of these things yeah. are like we know that what? they're nomenclature for things, and sometimes they'll they'll misuse or reuse things in places and that I, it doesn't. And might... I also like I'm thinking about the lifelines, and I'm like the year isn't going to help because <clears throat> air power already limits it so much that yeah. I don't. It's in I the don't same think... era of a lot of other air powered stuff. Yeah, and that it's going to be like 2010 ish. But I don't know exactly, you know, like somewhere between 2015 and like yeah. 2010. Like, OK. And then um, the Whistlers were primarily of that same era as well. Yeah. Because um, I might have some sitting on the wall right now. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I quite literally have a lot of this stuff around me. So. What do you, what do you, what do you, how do you feel about just going for the four points, saying mag strike? I'm for we it. Either get it or we don't. I'm for it. I know, I know Jolt, Jolt's going to be like, ha, I found this thing and it has nothing to do with any of the things that I were listed in that thing at all. <laughs> it's going to be like, I swear I'm going to get you one I of these things. I found this thing in the description is 0% accurate. <laughs> exactly. You found that one. I would go with Mag Strike. I, right. it, it really is the only one that, that kind of fits the description. We're just, we're just going for it, Jolt. You're going for it, Mag Strike? We're going for it. You are incorrect. Yep. I knew uh, it. So, all right. uh, first of all, I wanted to correct you on Mag Strike. The first one was not yellow. The first ones were in the Dart Tag series. They were red and blue. Oh, okay. So they were red and blue oh, for those. Okay. Gotcha. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yes, you are correct. Air Powered was, in fact, a misdirect. Had a feeling. So, I was. you were actually kind of close with you kept going around the Dart Tag line. The blaster in question is the Sharp Shot, which is the single shot one released in 2011. Oh, come on. With the slide prime. It actually came with a belt clip attached to the sling point that you could attach to your belt. Oh. And the darts that came with it are the Whistler versions of the Tagger darts. Wait, it actually had a belt clip? I've never Wild. seen one. I've never yeah, seen they're that always before. missing. Of course I'm they sure are. it's like the little it's like the little translator things on the rebel blasters. You never see those. Uh, hmm. All right. <laughs> well, I thought about that blaster too, but I didn't say anything about it because I was like, nah. <sighs> Yeah, with it's it's <laughs> problematic because you have dart tag, you have air powered, and you have like all these things that were popping up around that era, and it's like any one of these could could slightly like they they could always mislead you with how they write well, it. Well, part of it too is that being in the hobby where we call spring power where we call these plunger tube powered blasters springers, right? They are as much air powered as they are spring powered. It is a transfer of power from your hands to a spring, and then that power is stored in the spring, and it is transferred to air pressure, which launches the dart. So it is not technically inaccurate to call a springer air-powered. And so I, they, that's just how they described it back then, I guess, sometimes when they felt like it, depending on how their boss treated them in the copywriting <laughs> department that day. It's more of like <laughs> pneumatics, because you're, lo you're taking a large... Yeah piston and you're changing and you're transferring that power to a small piston which is the dart that's what that's what springers are and it's like oh my god but they call it all air powered and ah. well Anyways. i hate it nice job <laughs> jolt Thanks. zero Thanks. points for i us. hate it jolt <laughs> score stays the same uh, next thing i wanted to talk about is it sure seems like there's a lot of stuff happening in the uh online foam flinging space in terms of um just changes in sort of the structure of just a, a lot of people changing what they're what they're up to i don't know how to describe this right because it's like the community is not evolving the community is evolving things are yeah. changing um and i think indicative of that is some larger creators sort of changing what they're doing or backing away from what they're doing um recently coop leaving the creation space in the hobby entirely um beret uh stepping back from youtube um neither of them necessarily quitting the hobby uh beret intends to be very active still in, in playing and being involved in stuff but um not but has been uh he's been posting some gameplay videos and stuff on the second channel lately um but definitely is not like doing heavily edited videos right now and of course uh foam blast which we've known was closing um which also means you know an end to this weekend nerf we also nearly lost reddit <laughs> the yeah. r nerf uh and then didn't um and I I don't know. Uh, it's interesting because I kind of just want to talk about what this actually means. Because I see a lot of people in, you know, Coop's comments 
like I mean I the same kind of thing happened I think when this week in nerf ended where there's this sense of like well what's going to be the next this week in nerf and like there doesn't have to be a the next this week in nerf there doesn't have to be a new coop like they are individual people who did their own things but I think understandably like people get very attached to big faces big names um in a hobby and we kind of have to step back and realize that like we are the hobby and that doesn't mean that the things that those people did weren't awesome one thing i would say here is coop has an even bigger effect than foam blast leaving because we all know foam blast foam blast is great but coop had us mu- such a reach like talking with people like i know People who I know who I was just trying to tell them about Nerf just in a casual conversation, they've heard of Coop. Oh, yeah. They absolutely. know nothing about the hobby and they know about Coop. I mean, think about think about our videos and how many subscribers we have versus how many views we get. And assume that Coop gets Coop with his 1.61 million subscribers gets, you know a lot more views than you might assume. Um, That's a lot of people he's reaching. If you've searched for Nerf stuff at all, you probably bumped into Coop's videos. Um, And so he has had a really huge reach. And it's interesting because uh, in some ways that is a large enough reach that it does kind of create a content creation vacuum. Like, there is a space to be filled, potentially, just in that there's one person, like, one person with that wide of a reach, that much more than the next biggest person is now no longer creating new content. They will still soak up some of the oxygen. Coop, Coop's videos will still be in search results for a long time. It's not like people are going to stop watching his videos, but he won't yeah. be making new content, which always drives a lot of new viewership. So, but yeah, um, I don't know. I, I'm just, I guess I'm just thinking about how we understand ourselves as, as a community and how that's impacted by the faces on the screen. Now, I think, you know, the, the whole thing about this, all of these people are changing as everybody's growing, everybody's evolving. And you have to think, you know, a lot of these content creators started when they were, you know, uh, teenagers, young adults, things like that. They've been doing this for a very long time. And, yeah. you know, they might have been in the hobby for a lot longer prior to making the YouTube stuff, for the content, and then they, they got into it. And, and, you know, obviously Coop kind of being one of the, the top of the creators who originally kind of jumped in on that early you know, YouTube explosion and, and really took off with that channel. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a point in time where is this what you want to do for, you know, the rest of your life? Is this in- interesting enough? People are going to change. You know, a hobby is something that you can pick up and, and enjoy for five minutes or you can enjoy it for 50 years. It just depends on the person. Yeah. And, and, you know, YouTube, I mean, we've, we've kind of seen it ourselves, you know, making content, is is a job it's it is absolutely a job it becomes work and if you don't really enjoy it if you're not inspired by it and things like that you you lose the passion you lose the the drive to want to keep going Mm -hmm. and obviously you know there's some fun or easy things to do and and a lot of people like we've seen a huge uptick of other content creators you know there's been a lot of them obviously we talked to maritime foam we've seen you know, a bunch of other like YouTuber as well that, that have started to kind of fill the void in different ways. Not enough you know, nerf different, too is worth a mention. Not, yeah, not enough nerf is a good example. Um, you know, all these people that are, have been popping up throughout this time, and you know, filling in places like different media pl- spots like uh, TikTok or you know Reels or Shorts or whatever, mm-hmm. and they're they're taking off in their own way on a newer platform. YouTube has been around for a while now. And while it still is kind of the the primary video source, it's not exactly still the most popular. There are other formats now, right? And 
you know, there, there are people who are popping off a lot more now on places like TikTok and they've never, they don't really touch YouTube for the most part. Yeah. You know, and we, we're just seeing kind of a shift in, of, of, uh, content creators and same thing phone blast you know originally it just started as they and i've i've talked with with uh, michelle and addy a lot about stuff like that and you know the start of it was mostly just they wanted to make stuff that helped the hobby and it turned into a full shop you know they just wanted right. to, to like offer a couple of little things here and there that just helped the hobby grow and that was really where it started and then it got to a point where you know, they, they were having to do all the stuff for, for a business and running for all this and, and filling that it, it, that's a whole nother, you know, venture on top of their already, you know, fulfilling daily jobs and yeah. they didn't want to give up their daily jobs. And that's the same thing. Coop even talked about it in his video. You know, he was, he's graduated from college. He's got other things he's more interested in. He, he wants to pursue these things and he wants something that's inspiring to do. Yeah. And, and, you know, we that leaves that does leave that vacuum but that means that it can be filled with someone else and there mm -hmm. are a lot of up and coming you know youtubers who have really fun content they they look like they're having a really good time with it you know obviously that a lot of these individuals we we talk with in some capacity and they've all been a, a real joy and that was another thing i've noticed is that a lot of these older um creators they were there through the forums and we know you and me personally, we know forums sometimes could have a little bit of a toxic. <laughs> well, we know that there can be toxic environments from that. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that transferred into some of this. And, and, you know, there was a lot of animosity between some people. There's been some drama here and there. And, yeah. you know, it, it gets, it gets hard to even grow and move beyond that because a lot of times forums or internet communities just don't let things go. And that, that becomes, a, you know, that becomes its own level of stress, its own level of kind of wear and tear on you to want to continue on something like that. So I, I kind of see why a lot of these people who have been around for a while are kind of wanting to take a step back. And if they're in the hobby, they're doing it for their own personal enjoyment, not to try to, you know, stay on top of a YouTube algorithm or something. Yep. yep. So. And, I, I, and, I, and I mean, I think that's, that's for the best ultimately like taking care of yourself and and making sure that you're happy with what you're doing is more important than any of that oh, stuff absolutely yeah um and we've we've seen that addy and michelle are clearly a lot happier and like i said in the show coop's smile in that uh thumbnail that is the smile of a man who is letting go of something that uh has been a burden <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> honestly, more power to him. I'm happy for him. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I'm happy for everybody. It, it's it's a ch a new chapter in their lives, right? People go through full changes in their lives, and that's what this is for them. And you know, a, a, from everybody that I have seen and obviously personally talked to, it sounds like a lot of them are much happier by taking mm -hmm. this this different step. So mm -hmm. you know, I, that's all I'm happy for. I'm happy that all of them seem to be kind of letting go finally because that's always a really hard one sometimes people are afraid to make that change because they feel that someone or something is relying on them or maybe if i right. hold out a little bit longer there's a comes a point in time when you just have to say you know what it's for me and i need to do this yeah that's so true that was our thing with moving across the country too i identify with that very much yeah um the other thing I wanted to touch on that's tied to this too is, um, you know, with this, with the kind of situation around Reddit, uh, and the admin shutting it down for so long and then, um, sort of accepting that, you know, the protest against Reddit's policies was not really changing anything and bringing the community back. Um, it, I agree with their take that, you know, diversifying how the Nerf community handles its information handles these conversations is healthy for the community overall. Um, I don't know if Lemmy is necessarily the outlet. It's interesting because, you know, Discord has the possibility for synchronous communication, but there like is Discord no individual is great. Discord. Because cause that's the thing. With Discord, Discord is many good things. For socialization, you can just pop into any channel and talk and have a nice conversation. Yeah. 
But the one thing that it is absolutely terrible at is cataloging information. And that's where Reddit beats the crap it's, out of it. It's, it's, yeah. better, it's better with the forum functionality, but the issue is, even with the forums, even if you have enough boosts on your thing that it saves data forever, um, you... D d so Discord is a weird situation in terms of centralization, right? Because it has this illusion of decentralization because, like, I'm in uh, some stupid number, 20 nerf discords or something. Oh, I'm in, like, but, over 30. <laughs> but they're all Discord. Mm -hmm. Even though they are all their own separate communities, if another company buys out Discord tomorrow and says everybody has to pay five bucks a month in order to stay on Discord, you're gonna, all these communities are gonna cut in to, like, a third of their current populations, and you're gonna lose those connections. And it will happen to all of them simultaneously because they are all on the same service. It's more like having multiple nerf reddits, reddit nerf subreddits, than yeah. it is like having multiple forum sites. So I do think that the reddit community is right, that the reddit admins are right, that we need other forums and other settings to, have, to continue to have these conversations in a way where information can be kind of stored. Um, and, you know, there's other things as well, but, like, I know that people were in our Discord looking for some of the files that were hosted by Foam Blast. Where their website had broken um, down in places because yeah. of... Yeah. That sort of and, just how long they've been there, you know, I think. Da data like that often exists on Thingiverse or on the Prusa site or whatever, but, you know, it can go missing. Or Where just in their own Discord. That was they did post it on their Discord, but again, if it's in a channel where there's discussion, it unless you it's pin buried. It, yeah, yeah, it starts to get buried, and that and you and the Discord kind of search a, function is kind of worthless for for things well, like this. And again, dis it, Discord but. Discord is designed for and is very good at synchronous communication. Yeah, Discord is that's, that's Discord is for. basically fancy it's, IRC. Yeah, it's not trying to be Reddit. Or at least yeah. it shouldn't be. I, I'm not a fan of the forms thing necessarily. I, I mean, I, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that anybody need, should be trying to be Reddit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, but the concept of having a forum where information can be reasonably well cataloged and searched, uh, I do think is important. Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. Uh, I would, I mean, uh, it would be neat to see some of the old forums open back up, but you know, whoever imagine runs those, Nerf Haven in 2023. I mean, sure, why not? But like, yeah. whoever runs Nerf Haven probably isn't even in the hobby anymore. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Just I, sitting there, I always so. remember looking at some of when I first was getting in this hobby, and I would come across a Nerf like Haven post, and somebody had put their photos on Photo Bucket, and it was a broken link oh yeah and yeah that was there's a kind lot of, of the broken problem images. some of these old yeah all these old images that somehow got deleted erased broken linked or, or whatever i actually just is. let my photo bucket die too all of yeah. my music.org threads probably got messed up yeah and that that is one downside about some of these old ones and it, it's i i will give discord that is that even if if you can at least pin certain things or catalog them in some way it's actually stored in that server and right. it's not it's not necessarily having to link to something else it can actually download it in and put it into the server but again it's not really designed for long-term cataloging like that and it's important to keep those distinctions in mind right when you're trying to organize stuff i mean like the discord's been working for us because we kind of work on a continuous two-week cycle and we have a lot of other ways that we store our information long term Someday we may start to lose some of the conversations, but like Discord does keep things for a very long time. And I think that the forum setting is working well for what we're doing, but I wouldn't want what we're doing to be the central core of how the community is holding its history. Yeah. You know? Um, so things to keep in mind, uh, maybe things that will help uh, whoever sort of builds the next generation of nerf forums and nerf discussion areas 
Uh, definitely think about your sort of long-term goals in terms of preservation and uh, community building. Yep. One last thing to talk about today. Um, there is a new tie-in blaster in town. Uh, another one of these internal Hasbro tie-ins uh, with a Magic the Gathering themed um, blaster, which yeah, is, a ma a Magic again, the Gathering uh, overpriced piece of plastic, yes. Well, okay, so <laughs> so we've talked about the price a little bit. And I want to be clear that I, I do not disagree with you that it is overpriced. But I all, just a but quick I reminder: do... the shell strike when it came out retailed, I believe, for fifteen United States dollars. I want something to say. like that. Something yeah. like that. Uh, how, this is Again, like what sixty Canadian? Yes. Which is like uh, what we, is it we, like? We we worked it out to forty five American, which is insane. There's there's like what Again, two cards, two pieces of yeah, what there, card? There's actually there's actually one card. There's so, one card, I, and this somehow yes. justifies tripling the price. So, Joel, do you play Magic the Gathering? No. So, secret, <laughs> secret lair, do you play a card game at all? No. Joel, I, do you know in my trade binder that I take uh, every week, uh, I have a $150 card? Like, I can see a card being worth that on the market after it has been released, but to charge that yeah. much from the factory so, is pure greed. So, Secret, se Matt, for those not familiar, including Jolt, Secret, secret Lair is Hasbro's, like, exclusive card, uh, card like, pre-order system. It's very analogous to Limited, um, but unlike Limited... Magic people mostly actually want the stuff that they make. Um, and so when you look at this collaboration, you it is really a collaboration between Nerf Limited and Magic um, Secret Lair. Now, the thing that is throwing me off about this... So, sorry, what, I get, what I'm trying to say is, in that context, I agree that as a product, this is overpriced. However, Beyond overpriced. I, I see I see the justification for a limited slash secret layer product. It is a price I would expect. Do I think that things should be priced that high? Prob no, but I am not thrown off by this price either. Now, no, no, it just seems thing that is unreasonable. Me, sure. Uh, the thing I, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not. It's not unreasonable in the context of understanding both what Nerf Limited is and what Secret Lair is. Basically, what you're saying the is they know people will pay it, so that's why they price it that way. Correct. Which is... There, there's a whole other discussion that can be had here. Um, that, that... That... Beyond uh, our scope. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> if anybody out there wants to start... Uh, an anti-capitalist nerf podcast with me hit me up but um contextually here uh the thing that is throwing me off about this product is that on the box they are showing a a, a it's just a land card and the box shows the front and back of the card so it's a playable land a fire land, a mountain, but it doesn't, it doesn't even look like it's like hollow or anything. And I'm, is that really the card? Is that really what the card is? Is it just a land? I'm not so, familiar. Like what, what is a land? So in, in, uh, in magic, you, um, you play lands, which, you can tap for mana, which is like magic energy. And then you're able to spend that magic energy to cast spells, which can bring monsters into play or cause effects on other players or on monsters or um, other permanents that can be created. And so every deck generally plays land cards. They're like the staple card of the game. Nothing else in the game generally works without them. Um, 
and people definitely are very into like cool like the land the lands like they're all the same regardless of what the art is on them so people are definitely interested in rare or unusual arts on land cards but I don't know. I like especially considering I really loved the um the revelation that the choice of this blaster was related to a specific magic card that deals 3 damage. So, you fire the 3 darts at once out of the shell. Right? Why isn't it a reprint of that card? I don't know. I'm, so I, let me get this straight. You're saying they put in some kind of common card that nobody cares about instead of one that would have made sense. I, I, kind of? I can't say that nobody cares about it. Again, like pl players and collectors alike like to have like, like a lot of times a player might have a favorite artist who draws the art for the cards, and they may want all their lands to be from that artist. Or they just like to have really unusual or uncommon ones. Because you can go to any card store and buy a stack of lands for a dollar. Because they're so extremely common. But there are specific prints of them that are harder to get. So is it like, is this one one of the super common ones? Or is it actually like unique? Or I, I have to assume that if this is a secret lair release... And if the card on the box is actually the card that they're including, if it is actually just a mountain land, it must be a rarer art. Uh, presumably, it would be an art that's only available with the blaster. Otherwise, it's hard to tell what the point would be. Money. <laughs> but they have disappointed me. But, well, but they're not like... When I tell you that like I know people... I guess when I tell you that I know people will pay this, that's assuming that the card is, in fact, exclusive to this set. Yeah. I don't know why they wouldn't do an exclusive card to this set. Especially if it's a secret layer thing that suggests that it is, the same way that limited series blasters are supposed to be. You get what I'm saying. Limited, limited blasters have had re non-limited re-releases in the past. So maybe they're just screwing it up. I don't know. Um, but if the card is actually just a Fireland, I don't understand it would have been more interesting to do this lightning card that does three damage that ties directly into the choice of blaster. I can see that. I can see that would make sense. Why would you not include the card that it, right. it ties to the thing? Like, right. Yeah, that's weird. Now, I do like the box design on this. It looks like uh, a magic deck box but made big enough to put a blaster in the blaster itself actually looks pretty nice and the shell strike is a cool blaster great. in general so it's it's nice to see a re-release of that it's just a shame that it's you know 45 united states dollars instead of 15 it's <sighs> weird well we're back in the same territory as the original dungeons and dragons blasters right where it feels like there's a very niche category of people who's into both of these hobbies or just yeah. into one of them enough to want everything i guess that would make sense like there's there's a, almost certainly a market here if you're a magic player who mostly plays red you're gonna buy this probably right even just to put it on your shelf with your deck or bring it or bring it to your casual games and threaten your opponents but if you're just a magic player in general, I don't know. It just depends on how much you like to collect the ephemera of your game. It's, it's a weird crossover for sure. Uh, and I guess part of the thing that's frustrating is, you know, the box art, maybe it... When I looked at it, I assumed what they were doing was they were including, like, a, a land with an exclusive art, and that the other card back was another card that they weren't revealing. Maybe but it the box the box uh Grim pointed this out if you zoom in on the box, it just says one magic the gathering card. Okay. Or a a magic the gathering card. So, yeah. But here is my question, and we always end the podcast with 
um, a question like this. If Hasbro is going to screw this up so badly, what, what tie-in collab inclusion like this from another hobby would you like to see packaged with a blaster? Like, like another hobby, or do you mean like another property? Well, like, like this, where you, you get a blaster and you get a Magic the Gathering card, and they are ostensibly tied together. Because if it I mean, were just like a I property, I would, start... I would love to see, like, I would love to see a My Little Pony blaster. I think that would be hot. But... Well, and so, well, uh, so more of the question is, <clears throat> would, you, would you love to see a My Little Pony blaster that comes with a maybe pony. like a blaster charm or something like that. That that's a that's yeah. A maybe they're, they're cool. crossed over to that. Actually, I'd a blaster buy that. A, that a blaster charm would be a great idea. Yeah, I'm surprised I, I'd Nerf buy hasn't that. Done more of that. <laughs> Yu Gi Oh, I'm gonna say it right now. Yu Gi Oh. Interesting. Uh, you ready for the Yu Gi Oh? Uh, I I would go in for Yu Gi Oh because I'm sorry if you did a tie in of like Dark Magician and or like. Blue eyes, white dragon. Come on, come on. There's so many cool like tie-ins that you can do with that. Mm. Like there's, and obviously some of the Yu-Gi-Oh cards were really cool. I I just I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> it, it. I think it's cool. I mean, like you know, if you're gonna go with Yu-Gi-Oh, vile. I mean, like I am a Pokemon TCG player. The problem is, there's really nothing blaster shaped in pokemon there's True. very few just make a pokemon and have around. it shoot out the mouth or something i mean like like max force that. blasters exist like do something like that you know what i would really love is um uh there's a pokemon called farfetch oh my god yeah there's a pokemon called farfetch uh which is essentially like looks kind of like a pelican I guess, sort of. Not a pelican, maybe like a seagull. Um, and it carries a leak. That's <laughs> yes. like its weapon. Yes. Give me a melee leak. Give me a nerf melee <laughs> leak. You can make it one of those like swords that like shoots a dart, like the Minecraft one. But I want it to be a leak. And I want it to come with a far-fetched card that's exclusive to that set. Okay, there is the uh, there is the evolved version of it too the galarian far yeah 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 galarian which has a, quite literally has the leak that's like a sword and it's like oh, cut in a particular that's way that's right that's right <laughs> and and it has, has a the, shield it, doesn't it carry like a shield sometimes? yes it carries a shield as well and yeah, actually it looks kind of cool give me the surfetch leak <laughs> nerf yes the call Sir nintendo Fetch. you've worked with them before yes here's my idea <laughs> i just had you know that Minecraft, like, Ender Dragon blaster that just came out? What if something yeah. like that came with, like, a code that when you put it into, like, Minecraft or whatever, you get, like, a texture pack for the game that makes it so that when the Ender Dragon is shooting at you, it shoots nerf darts. <laughs> now you're and, talking. And, and instead of, like, the I explosion it. sounds, it just makes, like, the sounds of a blaster firing. Yeah, now I you're love thinking it. with Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Nerf should pay us. Yeah, Every Hasbro, episode, we're just get, giving get on this. Stuff. I know. We, we've we at least claimed it. We'll be expecting our royalty checks. Um, yeah, give us our cut. <laughs> give us, we'll be expecting our cuts. After you've you given Nintendo them. their cut. Exactly. And Microsoft. <laughs> uh, well, now that we've solved uh, world hunger... <laughs> I think it's time to sign world off. World hunger? What do you mean? Did I did I manage to teach all the hungry people of the world how to eat hot glue? I think <laughs> I think you may have. It's true. Uh, anybody got anything going on this week? Do you want to plug? Jolt's working. So yeah. probably not. Jolt's working. <laughs> I'm doing more integration work on my stream. Uh, actually, when this is released, I'll probably be streaming because uh, I stream both Fridays and Saturdays. <laughs> 12 to 8 p.m. Pacific. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's mostly what I'm doing. Oh, I'm also building a bunch of storage. I've been doing a ton of woodworking on the side to get all of my Nerf collection actually um, organized, which is, a f <laughs> which is a feat. Good luck with that. Yeah. 
um, sick. So be sure to check out file stream. And, uh, I will also, uh, I am still writing a song every day this month. They are being posted on my YouTube. Um, I will also be streaming music this week, uh, at least three times. Uh, I'll be putting up a schedule on my discord and some other places soon. Um, but I'm planning on streaming Thursday, Friday, Sunday. So keep an eye out for that. Fun music streams. I highly recommend. Thank you, Lyle. Um, we have a good time. I do uh, the third, when I do the Thursday one, it's usually like an ambient stream. So if you got some work and some studying to do, it's a really good vibe. And then otherwise I'm just improvising music. We may write our daily songs on stream as well this week. Anyway, my voice is wearing out. Bye. Please. Good night. Eating hot good glue. Job, <laughs>